Our speakers, we have uh, Mr. Tanat Tong Utaisi from NASDA and STDA. Uh, he's an innovative consultant to NASDA and other government agencies uh, focusing on science and technology. And he also focuses, his domains is in blockchain, fintechs, and AI. So please welcome Mr. Tanat. Thank you very much. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Tanat from NASDA. Actually, I'm no longer with NASA as of today, so this is the latest development. I'm now with the Royal Thai Army. Um, I'll be working on cybersecurity, but I'll be helping out the autonomous vehicle community um, you know, um, um, to, to develop the actual AV solutions in Thailand. And although we are not aiming for the level 4 or level 5, which is like fully autonomous um, solution, um, but at least um, hopefully we can develop a level 3 um, or, um, there's a technical term called ADAS, um, Advanced Driver Assistance System in Thailand for the next few years. So let's see what have we got. Um, well, since um, I was from NASDAQ, I have to promote a, li a little work that we've done with the, um, um, the private company. So that's Sansiri, one of the larger um, property developments in, in Thailand. Um, so Sansiri, through Siri Ventures, which is their corporate um, venture capitalist, um, has signed an MOU with NASDAQ. So the gentleman, um, the second from your left, um, that's one of our executive vice president. Um, um, he looked after the automotive session and um, we, they decided the MOU along with the um, Siri Ventures CTO, um, um, Kun Jirapat, um, um, Jam Jersak, okay, um, of Siri Ventures. Um, by the end of this year, Sensory will launch a township um, called T77 along Sukhumvit 77. It's a new concept of having the large community um, together. So the size of T77 is about 40 acres and the longest road, um, longest path from the front gate to the deepest side um, of T77 um, um, is about two kilo kilometers long. By the end of this year, Center will move their headquarters along with 3,000 staff um, to T77. So they are looking for solutions to help with the transportation, mobility of um, their staff as well as the um, and people in, in the communities. Inside T77, there are going to be about eight um, con condominiums um, varying in sizes. There are um, primary school, there are community mall called, called Habito. Um, they are working together with Hubba to, to have that um, community mall. So they allow us to um, use that property to be a sandbox and test the AV solutions. Um, in the long term goal, um, that NASDA along with our new ministry which used to be known Ministry of Science and Technology, but now we are known as, um, um, in short, it's called MESI. So M-H-E-S-R-I, that's Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research, and Innovation. Um, our three years goal is to have the autonomous shuttle service. Um, but again, we are not aiming for level four or level, level five. Um, um, we are gonna have um, at most level three. Um, partly because of the regulations that we have to work on um, um, Ministry of Tran Trans Transport as well. We have the MOU um, with Ministry of Transport and they are looking up to our pro prototype before we can proceed with the proper regulations. Um, now, in terms of talent development, we want to bring something fun um, to, to Thailand. Um, Amazon Web Services, um, during their major annual event, reInvent, um, normally happening in November each year in Las Vegas, um, they launched um, um, this new toy called um, Deep Racer. Essentially, it's a building um, hardware, you know, um, equipped with our this latest, latest, latest technology for a toy car. Um, people who want to get involved only need to implement um, one of the AI techniques called reinforcement learning. Um, so Deep Racer allows, um, you know, the, the, the shorter time to, to learn this um, RL or reinforcement learning model in a fun way. Um, we are looking into bring, um, um, to bring Deep Racer League in Thailand. At the moment, there are about 20, 22 uh, physical leagues um, um, across the world, and there are six virtual leagues. Um, Amazon Web Services, um, the public sector staff, is working with one of the um, university, which is KMITL, um, King Mungkut Institute of Technology, Lat Kabang, um, to develop um, uh, um, academic programs um, on autonomous vehicle, and hopefully they can um, train their students to win a race, and then we can use that as a magnet to bring the Deep Racer Physical League um, to, to Thailand in, um, you know, in next year or so. Okay, this is an uh, unrelated development. Um, I, I, I will show you um, shortly how it is, um, how it is involved with you know, Thai, another Thai universities. 
So NVIDIA, um, again, that um, um, Dr. Pushong uh, um, is using their cloud computing um, computational power, um, DGX1, um, for the edge computing for aut automotive. Um, they have this product called Drive um, Platform, and the latest or the most powerful edge computing for automotive is Drive HX Pegasus. Um, the rating is about 320 tops. Tops is different from um, teraflops. T teraflops is used for floating point operation only, but tops um, you can use to for calculation for both integers and floating point. So, 320 tops that's um, equated to be about 80 ter teraflops. So it's about one tenth of the proper processing power of DGX1. But remember that it is an edge device, so it, it is quite powerful. Um, one of the university in the southern Thailand, that's Prince Ongkha University, um, Hat Yai Campus, they've been experimenting computer vision with autonomous vehicle. Um, their edge computing um, right now, they rely on a smaller scale um, edge device from NVIDIA as well called um, Jetson. Um, Jetson, unfortunately, is designed for you know, um, CCTV or the traffic controller board. It's not designed for automotive. Um, so it gets over over overheated very easily. So NVIDIA launched this product instead. And they have partnered with one of the you know, well-known, very long-established um, car maker, that's Volvo, um, to, to, to have the edge computing installed in the um, so-called autonomous vehicle solutions. So um, Prince Ongkla um, University is going to procure that um, um, very, very shortly. Um, NASA is one of um, the, the contact point that um, we, we want to smooth things um, through between dealing with the vendors and the academic sectors. So hopefully we can see the drive platform you know, um, um, being experimented in Thailand soon. Um, I have to note that drive platform is only available in eight countries, not including Thailand. So we have to go to NVIDIA Singapore, um, prove ourselves that um, of our en enthusiasm to, to work on autonomous vehicle, um, and we have to get authorization from NVIDIA Japan, um, who look after drive platform in the Asia Pacific um, be before we can procure that. Okay, so that's a quick recap. Um, we talk about T27, Deep Racer, um, um, the major partner is go going to be King Mongkut um, in, in Latgabang. We are also talking, about one of the, um, talking with one of the holdings company of the te telco or telecommunication company. They want to sponsor this event. Um, again, it came through channel of NASA, so NASA is going to be the in intermediary to connect them together. Um, Infineon is one of the hardware um, ma manufacturers. Infineon is also having a, the, um, an autonomous vehicle lead of, of their own. So Infineon is already a partner of KMI KMITL. So what we are thinking is after launching DeepRacer Lead, DeepRacer only involved with the software um, layer, which is reinforcement learning. Um, the hardware itself is pre-built by Amazon Web Services. But in the long run, if we can get um, the students to work on the hardware itself by using in Infineon technologies, um, we can combine both um, reinforcement learning models through Amazon Web Service Cloud or other cloud provider. And with the hardware, that students can customize on their own using in Infineon framework. Um, OK, we talk about um, NVIDIA Drive. Open Motors is a startup from Silicon Valley. They graduated from Y Combinator um, in 2014. Um, the founders were work with Pirin Farina in Italy. So let me just show you their kind of um, design. So the, the outer layer, the look and feel of, of their vehicles are very modern, um, and unlike many other AV solutions. And that concept is to have a modular design. Think of your phone. When your battery is um, kind of um, depleted or um, break down, instead of changing your entire phone, um, you can just change the batteries. If your screen is broken, you can just change the, the screen. So concept of open models is everything is modular. You can adapt um, everything according to your needs. For example, um, this vehicle is designed for passenger's car. But if you want to use that for logistics, you can um, change the top. You, you, don't need any, you don't need any seats for passengers. You can um, change it to the holding space for cargo. Um, so that's the concept of open models. So we are working with them um, to bring open models concept to Thailand. Um, um, we are connecting suppliers of different parts from you know, the steering, the braking, the powertrain, uh, to the seats, the outer layer, the lighting. Um, so hopefully in the next few years, um, we might see very nice looking um, 
um, electric and autonomous vehicle um, on the closed area. Um, we, I, I left out the part about public road yet because we don't have the rules and regulations in place yet, but hopefully we will have that soon. Um, just back shortly, um, we are also working on the consortium, um, um, partnering between private and public sectors, um, and also the reg regulators. Um, also, we want to have this roadmap about if we want to have AV work, um, um, running on this closed area or even on the public road in the next 10 or 20 years, what we need to do. So we are, we are working with a few governing bodies, the um, public sectors and universities um, um, to work on that white paper, which will be publicized um, once it is ready. Okay, um, a few points about open source, open data. Um, for example, the positioning of AV, we rely on GNSS. GNSS is a, is a more generic term of um, GPS. GPS is a US name, really. It's not a generic term. Generic term is GNSS or Geo Navigational Sat Satellite System. It allows you to find the positioning of each object, in this case, this um, autonomous vehicle. Um, the more accurate solution of GNSS is RTK or real time kinematics. It allows you to pinpoint down to m millimeters accuracy. Um, there's an um, open source library called RTK Lib, um, so that's part of the um, open source initiative. Um, the second part, um, federated learning. This is a new concept um, of if you have the private data installed in your own devices and you do not want to expose that data, how you can train and improve your you know, AI or deep learning model. Um, um, federated learning allows, you, allows each device who volunteer to participate to train um, or, and update the model in their own device, and then they send only the weighting, the adjusted weight, back to the central server, and the central server will um, federate all these models together. Um, actually, from memory, tomorrow, um, being the 2nd of October um, in the evening, I think there's a meetup. The first meetup on federated learning. Um, just go to meetup.com, look up federated learning. Um, um, the organizer actually worked with Andrew Trask of Google. Um, Andrew Trask is one of the pioneers in federated learning um, in, with Google DeepMind. Um, you can learn more about how federated learning work. Um, AV is one of the use cases for federated learning. Um, we will have a new role, new um, jobs role called data la labeler. So when you have this raw data, you need to tell, um, you, you need to label them um, um, to, so that you can train the AI model accordingly. Um, this can be a new, new job um, for, for the industry. Um, already Amazon Web Services, they have this concept that you can em um, employ physical worker and real human worker to do your dirty work, you know, those tedious mundane work um, called Mechanical Turk. So you pay this very low fee and you get hu actual human to do certain things for you. But it's very simple task. For example, um, labeling data is one of that task. Um, in China, you have these chop shops, right? Um, people just go in, sit in front of their computers, label the data all day long, and you use this label data to train your AI model. Um, so autonomous vehicle, we need to rely on this um, label data as well. And we have open source data set, um, which is a very good direction for the autonomous um, vehicle community. Um, by far, well, there are three major players. Um, FTIF, you might not know FTIF, um, but you might have heard of Newtonomy. Newtonomy is an um, um, autonomous vehicle um, startup or more towards robo-taxi, so autonomous um, taxi service in Singapore, and they've been acquired by FTIF. Um, they open um, a data set called New Scenes. Um, also, Argoverse by Argo.ai, um, they just opened up that recently, and also Waymo. Um, okay, if you are interested in um, training I images for autonomous vehicle, you can look up um, this three data set which is available as an open data. Interesting development, uh, let me see. Okay, I don't have much time. Um, our organizer, Mishri, introduced me to Mapillary. It's the um, open data um, street map. You can contribute, um, you know, um, if, you are, if you love traveling and you carry, um, you carry your smartphone along, you know, take photos, upload it. Um, it um, you can help the community build another open data for um, street maps as well. Um, okay, um, Open uh, Interface Software Alliance, OSA. That's another open source initiative for 5G connectivity. Um, um, even the co connectivity side, some of the libraries are proprietary, but the major player knows that open source um, community will drive um, the adoption of this technology. So they allow certain part of their codes um, to, to be open source. Um, okay. 
Let me skip to Sony. Sony um, is building an autonomous vehicle, but with a new concept, with an entertainment in mind. So people sitting, the passengers um, sitting inside can see the um, interior um, to be the entertainment um, while they are moving along. Um, and the outside, you can also have the, another business model. You can display um, advertisement as well for, for the other people. So this is going to be a new business model for the new era once we have the autonomous vehicle running on the street. Um, Effectiva is a company who specializes in computer vision. In this case, it, it can be applied to detect the emotion or the state of the, the, the chauffeur or the drivers, whether or not they are sleepy, whether or not um, they are um, using their mobile um, um, without concentrating on the road. This is especially harmful if you are not on the level 5 fully autonomous vehicle. Um, you, it still requires driver attention on the road. Um, perceptive automata claims that it can understand human um, behaviors, um, for example, humans surrounding you, either the pedestrian or the drivers in the car nearby you. Um, per, per, perceptive automata claim that they can anticipate their decision, um, um, what, what they are going, going to do next, which allow autonomous vehicle to act, um, your, um, your own autonomous vehicle, the one you are si sitting in, to act appropriately and um, improve the safety. Um, and we have standards, um, uh, normal automotive standards, um, functional safety. Um, ISO 26262, um, that's for the system to fail. Um, um, can it fail safely without having um, caused any accidents? Whereas the, an, another ISO standard, 21448, um, it checks whether or not the intended functionality is actually safe. Because even though it works as planned, but the design itself might not be safe. So um, these two um, standards are, 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 com are complement. And autonomous vehicle, um, the most important components, because we, are, we want to focus on safety. So the braking system is very crucial. Um, and um, at the moment, there are two manufacturers that have this extra safe um, braking system, uh, so Bosch, um, Bosch and Con Continental. Um, and uh, the Ministry of you know, um, MESI, um, Higher Education Science Research and Innovation, is working with one of them. Actually, we want to work with two of them, with both of them, but only one of them got in touch with, um, with us, so we are going to trial um, one of their product on our um, autonomous vehicle prototype. Um, and we have to go through um, other standards like Euro NCAP and, um, and see how Singapore, the Land um, um, Transport Authority, LTA, um, they have this um, um, technical reference, TR68, which actually allow them to skyrocket in the Autonomous Vehicle Readiness Index um, to be number two in the world according to KPMG. They're only second fr um, to the Dutch or the, the Netherlands because of this TR68. So let's, let's go through quickly. So there are four parts in TR68 uh, about basic be behavior of standalone autonomous vehicle not connected. Um, connected um, and connectivity will come in a later part. So essentially how it interprets the road signs, um, the lanes, the marking signals, and so on, and how the policy and rules um, are designed in, in the framework. Safety, um, Elon Musk, um, um, Lex Friedman of MIT, um, people who work in the autonomous um, vehicle industry in the US, they all agree that the most important thing about autonomous vehicle is to promote road safety. So safety is a very crucial part. Um, um, for anyone who wants to, to get into this arena. So in Singapore, um, they, they focus on, on this part, and they focus on how AV can be operated safely in, on the public, public road. In Thailand, I foresee um, the, 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 so, the soonest that we can see that happen is probably 10 years, right? But Singapore, they might see it in, in, in three years. Um, in this part, they also have various use cases for Singapore. So if Thailand is to follow suit, we're going to have to define our own use cases and ensure that there are road safety suitable for those use cases as well. Um, and there are many um, system level safety, um, you know, functional and op op operational. Um, oh, okay. and if you see the third bullet um, about people involved with the autonomous vehicle, whether or not they are vehicle developer, um, SI or system in integrator or even the op operator, system op operator. Um, um, in Singapore, they said you, um, they need to be a competent organization. Okay, um, they need to have a proper quality management system, and also it is um, it needs to be supported by competent personnel. So this is something that our government needs to work on as well: how to certify 
the competent organization um, and what is the proper quality management system and how to certify competent personnel to, 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 to support it. Um, cybersecurity is another um, crucial example. Um, even in the, the Western world, um, people in automotive do not know much about cybersecurity, but you know that um, in DEF CON or Black Hat CON, people hack Tesla, people hack folks, folks Volkswagen all the time. But these hackers, they don't come to automotive um, exhibition or conference. Um, they only gather themselves in this kind of um, hackers-related um, computer geek um, conference. So we need to connect both worlds together and ensure that um, autonomous vehicle manufacturers also um, concerned about cybersecurity um, standards and best practice. Um, the parts like um, there are parts with the cyber physical, meaning that there are parts that are traditional automotive and combination, combinational part that interact together and that com computational part can control the physical part of the automotive. That needs to be um, um, tested against any cybersecurity threat. Otherwise, you know, if you've seen the Fast and the Furious, um, I'm, I'm not sure which maybe part seven or something. Um, I think the bad guy hack into, they use the well, zero day um, um, threat to hack into autonomous vehicle and get them to work according to their you know, malicious plan. Um, but if there are proper um, controls and checks in place, that can never happen. Um, okay, let's go through this quickly. This, part, this last part on TR-608 is about connectivity. Um, so again, in Thailand, it's gonna be a long, long time because we need um, infrastructure, for example, um, Dr. Puchong mentioned about 5G test bed with the Kaset Sat University in Sirasha campus. They are the very first site that have this 5G infrastructure. Um, but it's being rolled out um, across the country very slowly. Um, um, hopefully, um, there will be more um, test bed for 5G, um, which can, we can test on um, the, 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 you know, the 5G application. If you, we might see the latest news that um, one of the minister um, have has control um, and a vehicle from um, far away. The vehicle itself is in Hat Yai, um, operated by Prince Ong Kha um, University. Um, the minister, Dr. Suwit Methin Si, is in, um, he was in Bangkok and he controlled this vehicle during the heavy rain situation. So apparently they have rain attenuation on the signal as well, but they managed to have this um, successful um, um, launch, um, successful test. Um, via the 5G network, um, also sponsored by AIS. Um, again, this is for the con connectivity level four and level five. Um, it, it's going to be a long, long time. Thailand also needs to work on the data infrastructure as well for that to happen. Um, just a quick, this is my last full slide. AVRI, Autonomous Vehicle Readiness Index, uh, according to KPMG. So they, they, how they index um, to the top 25 capable countries on AV. Um, they they break down into the four pillars. For the first one, apparently, is policy and legislation. Rest assured that Ministry of Transport, there are sub-departments like Department of Land Transport, um, there's um, Departments of Highway, Departments of Rural Roads, and um, Office of the Transportation Policy, OTP, or They are working on the autonomous vehicle policy. Um, they are involved with our roundtable discussion on, on, on AV. But we need, the actual, we need to see the actual prototype before, before they can um, draft the legislation and rules accordingly. Um, technology and in innovation. Apparently, there's a buzzword with the um, public organization called PPP, um, Public-Private Partnership. So we are promoting um, that in Thailand as well. So we need to partner with you know, and the private companies to work on the AV solutions. Um, and we need more investment on the AV-related firm. Um, um, and our researchers, our scholarship students who came back from overseas um, are bringing their knowledge from their professors um, from the US, Europe, Japan, um, um, together to build this local, localized solution for AV. Also, um, we also need um, the more market share on EV as well, because EV, we, even though we don't need um, electric vehicle, but electric vehicle will actually help with um, um, development of AV because autonomous vehicle rely on sensors. Sensors use electricity, so these sensors can be installed very easily on EV. But you can work on these sensors or the autonomous function on the traditional internal combustion engine or ICE, um, or those cars that use petrol, um, it can be done as well. 
infrastructure. This is not only the data or IT infrastructure, not only telecommunication infrastructure, but also the quality of roads. Um, rest assured that you know, um, if you live in Thailand long enough, you know the quality of our um, road. Um, um, but rest assured that the um, relevant departments they are working to improve the quality of our roads um, so that AV can be adopted in I don't know um, sooner rather than, than than later. Also, logistic performance index. Um, logistic industry will be one of the demand side or the demand pool um, that um, that see the AV um, in trucks or you know, in, in, in cargo transportation um, to be adopted in the uh, near future. I think this is my last slide. Public awareness. Um, we see in, I think, Pittsburgh. Uh, Waymo um, operated on the public road on, on Pittsburgh, but certain people who might be in technophobia, um, they actually grab baseball bat and smash on the car, you know, um, um, because they do not understand how autonomous vehicle can help improve their quality of life. So again, we need to engage the users, the general public, from the very early stage um, through you know, various um, measures in, in this slide. Again, I do not have um, my contact details, but if you like, um, you can reach me via line, line application. My ID is social. So that's me, S-O-C-I-A-L, that's my line ID. Or look up my full name in LinkedIn. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to connect with you and if you are interested um, in the roundtable talk, you do not need any technical background. Even being an observer, we are more than welcome because, again, this last slide is about engaging the general public to be aware about the upcoming autonomous vehicle solutions. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Tanat.